Number 10, Cocoon. Ooh. Oh, yeah. This got there because <laughs> yours truly. Yeah, it wasn't because of me. Yeah, I was the only one that had it uh, on my list, and it had eight points. So there, there's our baseline Ooh. For, for the start of this. That means it was your number three yeah. or two? Yeah, it was my number three. I freaking love this game. <laughs> uh, I can't do I'm math. I'm glad it was my number three because this game deserves to be on the top <laughs> yeah, 10 I game. can't do math. <laughs> I freaking love this game. I can't. I mean, I've talked about it a lot on our award show and just in general. I've looked forward to this game for you know, multiple years now. Uh, it's one of my favorite studios. Well, Play Dead was one of my favorite studios, and this is them by extension of breaking off from the original. Uh, and they just delivered, man. Like, it's such a grand indie. Like, it holds on to some of that indie stuff where you, I mean, like, you can tell that you know it's made by a small team with love but at the same time if if you told me that it was a bigger team i would believe it too just because yeah. it's so intricate uh it is very I, intricate I, I I, yeah it. i was amazed by playing this game like of how you just jumping in like how quick yeah. it was how seamless it was and those this, aha this game was looking through the curtain at my 10 because it was so close to yeah. making it and it just didn't i mean it's a stacked year it was hard yeah, very sad, but, yeah. And that was one, I was, it was like at 11. And I was yeah. like, I have to cut it because I want my number 10 to be there. Number nine, Alan Wake 2. Ooh. Also had eight, eight points. Tiebreakers, if something placed with on more lists, I put that above the other. Okay. So three things tied for these final three spots. Cocoon was only on my list, so it got 10. Number nine was Alan Wake. It was on two lists. It was on. It was at the back end of mine. And I have to be full transparency here. I did not play it. I watched a lot of it, and I heard plenty. And I love games like it. So I just started it today. I felt like this game deserved to be on the list because what would, what it pushed off. I was like, I would like it better than that. I'm just glad it's on the list because it deserves every bit of it. Yeah. And I love this game. But I, you know, I I get why it's as low as it is because it's hard to play everything it's just in this year yeah i i had it at number 10 because uh like i said there were some things that i felt like it deserved to be there over it and i i, I think it deserves to be on this list i think most for sure and it, about. like if somebody would tell me all right the alan wake game that came out years ago is gonna get a sequel yeah, yeah. i would not have been excited because the first one never drew me in yeah it was control good, never but... drew me in this mm -hmm. one has and it makes me want to know more about control. That's how yeah. good like the story stuff it is. It makes you want to go back to play. I was like, oh, I really like, want to know yeah. how, because there's some control stuff in it. Not yeah. directly, but Yeah, tie some overlap. And I was like, I want to go back and play control because I want to know. And just because I love this world. Mm -hmm. And I do love the world that Remedy is building. I just can't wait to see what they do next. Yeah. So you had this at four? I had this, yeah, four. Four. Uh, so yeah, okay. Also had eight points is number eight. Number eight. Hogwarts Legacy. I'm so glad this is on the list. Honestly. Yeah, I am too. Because yeah. I think this game has been snubbed in a lot of other lists. I think lists. so too. And I mean, it is really there's good. There's not one nomination for it at the Game Awards. Yeah, I don't understand that because like they delivered this world as good as I can imagine a video game delivering. And you're yeah. not a Harry Potter fan. Right. Like, So I think that should go even further that it kind of made me reassess my feelings about, about Harry Potter. I always liked the movies, but it was never... It didn't grab me the way it grabbed you. I was more yeah. of a Lord of the Rings kid. But this made me want Lord of the Rings to be like this. Yeah. You know, where I am in this world and I'm playing my own role in this world and I get to just kind of be free and go explore. And the, I mean, there are some problems with like questing in yeah. terms of like it feels disjointed in terms of getting to the next quest was way over it feels here. Feels a little old school game. To me. Yeah, a little bit. But I think when you have a big castle like Hogwarts, that's going to be a part of that is that you have to like, Right. And run I'm around so... and find what's next, you know, and you're exploring and seeing the authentic, you know, how they recreated this world. Some of the areas weren't even shown. And yeah. they, they didn't make it feel I'm so hokey. impressed by the map. And yeah. of course, Hogwarts for sure is the centerpiece of the map, but everything surrounding it, like the little yeah. towns and stuff that yeah. I never thought would like I didn't put much thought into what was beyond Hogwarts and now yeah. it's like fleshed out and like there's, yeah, there's little towns. There's stories from yeah. these towns. The woods, stuff. the forbidden forest and or whatever. I'm, so glad they went the route they did with this game. Like, just good choices as far as like setting it into a time period where there's yeah. no characters yes. that you know. Also, the year, you're a year, whatever it is, student. You're five. Uh, just yeah. so you're learning spells that are more advanced. And, and it's, like, yeah. You're not doing the basic stuff that you would do in the, uh, if you were a first year. Yeah. Cause if you play like the Lego Hogwarts or Lego Harry Potter game, 
you start out at year one yeah. and you only get like one or two spells. And then the games go up every year. You get more spells. And this just kind of threw all the spells at you. Not really threw them at you, but yeah. it, it felt natural. It made it a, it made it a reason for you to have those spells. Right. I feel like the people, the detractors of this game treat it like a Ubisoft thing. It's, it's not that. It's not. Like, I feel uh, like there's a lot more love put into it. Like You can tell when you go to these classrooms and stuff that these are fans of oh, definitely. that world. Yeah. yeah, whereas I feel like Ubisoft, I, I'm not saying they're terrible. They do a good job realizing a world, but it always feels so stock to me. Like uh, Even when they're doing like France and Italy and everything, it's so like, I don't know, there's nothing inspired about it to me. It's more like we it, looked yeah. at pictures and we made that thing, whereas this is like we love Harry Potter and we're you know showing our fandom how much we read the books and like some of those rooms that bathroom uh, i remember there was a whole thing about that how they the description of the bathroom was never shown in the movies and they did it to a t all in the books yeah Yeah, yeah. it's just wild that they took that extra time to make everything authentic uh, that wasn't even already shown and like all the houses the hogwarts houses like the only one we ever really saw in the movies was slytherins and gryffindors and then you get hufflepuff and ravenclaws and yes just from a little bit of descriptions in the mm-hmm. books and like there's yeah. awesome it i don't know and it doesn't I'm, feel okay. i'm very amazed by this game so you said like like i'm not as big of a fan as fans y'all being as big of fans as y'all are does it feel hokey like when you no, walk into those rooms? it doesn't it feels like that's what it should be yeah and that's why i'm so impressed with the game but it like, would have been so easy just to plug in fan favorite characters into this game yeah yeah uh, fallen order or <clears throat> yeah. Jedi survivor <laughs> And like you just you. plug in these characters, and yeah. here's your fan service, and it didn't do any of that. Hogwarts is the only real thing that we need. Yeah, it's the uh, character that yeah. shows up. Yeah. It's Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, I think the, it, it the, just deserves the credit this year. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about being at eight, though, I think the reason it's there is because some of the story elements are a little wacky. Yeah. Like uh, the main villain doesn't feel. It, it, yeah, yeah, I'm not really. I don't know his name. I just know he's a little goblin guy. Yeah, him and like all of the main villains. I was never really a fake. Never really worried about any of them. Right. The story, yeah, it wasn't. The but also, best. how do you? I didn't care about the like the whole like yeah. the four people, and then I was like, that's yeah. cool. I guess in the memories and stuff. Like it, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't. I was more, It wasn't as good as the movies. You know, I like the side stuff more. Yeah. The little side stories that people. Yeah, had. that's the that's where it really got good to me. Is that yeah, exploring and and helping people along the way. It, it did a really good job of that. As good as any open world game this year. And good puzzles. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Number seven, Final Fantasy 16. Awesome. I love Clive Final is Fantasy. the shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I love Final Fantasy 16. Uh, wasn't expecting, I mean, I, I love Final Fantasy, but yeah. I wasn't expecting to really get into the story of this one, and it's pretty much Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why it was lower on my list, and it's just because it's a hard year. Yeah, but I, really I'm good. glad it's here, and I think the story is worth checking out. Even if I would, like for you who don't like the you don't like the combat, yeah, like to, just to watch that story somehow on YouTube or something because it is a very yeah. Like, well, I, oh story. yeah, that's why I kept pushing on because I do I really love the way they deliver this story. I like it. the characters are awesome, the cinematics of it are awesome. Oh, it doesn't yeah. feel silly like some of the right. other elements of Final Fantasy can feel. Yeah, like it never really goes into that tone that you know like uh, ironic. Tone that some, yeah. like especially Final Fantasy VII has that it, they know what they're doing with mm-hmm. it, but it doesn't really connect with me. Uh, it's ironic to me that this is tied with Armored Core because FromSoft gameplay is my favorite gameplay of all time. If Final Fantasy sixteen played like Dark Souls, it would have been definitely in my top five. Oh yeah, like because that was my problem. I just felt like there wasn't the impact of like Armored Core. There, everything has this punch to it, like this return on your investment with every attack you do and then final fantasy i'm just like slash 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 which is why I, why i don't like devil may cry and stuff like that because i don't and feel that like was any a doesn't feel heavy right you're just working a bar down and then the good thing happens you know like then you yeah. press x to finish home or something like that it, it's definitely the best final fantasy gameplay has been for me but it still wasn't quite what I was looking for. I was just hoping it had. I will more say to it. the more you unlock as far as spells and stuff, it yeah. the combat does get. I do like the magic. Yeah. yeah, it gets harder and harder. Like where you're having to like, all right, I need to use a spell here mm. to like crowd control. And like it does get better, but I like the, the first 10, 15 hours. Yeah. I was like, this is easy. Like I'm just yeah. going yeah. through and slashing these people. Uh, of the gameplay, I like the fighting hordes more than I like fighting a big enemy because the big enemy was just like sitting in that one spot. And you're hitting them a lot, 
Whereas Horde, you had to think about, okay, this one's coming in. I need to tra- uh, change off. There was actually some strategy in my mind when I was fighting multiple enemies. Rather and than while the story one. moment of it was cool, playing as the icon, yeah, I didn't enjoy actually controlling it as much yeah. as I did. Like what was going on was a lot cooler than me playing it. And right, I'd rather and, just be watching it. And that's the complete opposite of the one we're going to talk about next where everything I did in that game felt cool. Yeah. Number six, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Never ever thought this game would make any of my lists, and now it would yeah. be in my top 100 games of all time for I sure. <laughs> really? Because uh, I really like. I, I knew you were going to give it a shot because you, you've been really good about that the past few years of just like, even if it's not your kind of game, you'll try it. But I didn't think you'd actually stick with it and beat <laughs> it because I'm, that game is hard, and I got really stuck in the middle of it, and I was like, I, Eric beat this. Like, that, yeah. I, I'm impressed. That and you beat it quick. Stuck it's too. a weekend. I, I, you I beat did this it quick. over a weekend, pretty much. It's, it's very hard. I don't think it gets enough credit for the, the difficulty. And the way that it curves it well, I think. Like, and that's what I like about it. It is hard. Yeah. And there's there's bosses in it that are very hard. But yeah. it's so easy and it's fun to go back to other missions and mm-hmm. grind a little bit to get money, to yeah. buy new parts. And you're like, all right, let's try this new part. Oh, this sucks. Let's mm. go back. Let's sell that part. Like, it was always tinkering with my mech and stuff. I was yeah. like, let's find out what works Fine the tuning. best. Yeah. The tinkering with the mech is one of my favorite things in it because you feel everything you can feel when you go back in the next time. The big change that happens when you do that. See, and I'm going to tell you how much I role played this is I whatever like chapter I was on, you got brand new paint. Yeah. And yeah. the more missions I did, I would start putting the, yeah. uh, the grade in it a little bit where it's like <laughs> getting, awesome. getting worn. And then That's like awesome. another chapter would start and I get new, like, I'd just gotcha. redo it all. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I That's, had this somewhere around, I think six or seven. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's that low for me, just because I like the traditional open world feel of finding my way through a FromSoft game. And I wouldn't like a Dark Souls or Elden Ring yeah, or where Bloodborne, you're where you're and... like, if it was that was mission based, I wouldn't yeah. like it at all. It works here, but it's not my style of game. I don't yeah. really like the hopping out and then you do the next mission and then you hop out. You know, like it kind of breaks up the flow of like I'm feeling really good in this one, and then I finish it and it's like, oh, well, let's restart. You know, like, yeah, but that's the only negative I really have for the game because I think it's all tied to, together well. The story. It's, it's not a lot, but I think but I they did a good job. And it's with crazy. It. I didn't care about the story until yeah. a little bit in, and I was like, "Oh, there's some actual. There's stuff happening." Yeah, yeah. And I like the the stuff I've done in missions. I remember them, yeah. and they would start talking about. It. I'm like, "Oh, this is all tying together." It's, I would just, it, it's just, cool. I would describe it as like an ambient story. Like it's yeah, it's, it's very background. background until it's not. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's good with it. I think you'd like it, Cole. Like, yeah, I do want to play it. Uh, Noah loved it. Eric loved it. Uh, so I always want to give it a try. Yeah. It's just a... Uh, it, I mean, it was just a big year. Number five, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Surprise of the year for me. Uh, this, this game getting announced and coming out and being as good as it is and yeah. as imaginative as it is and every level feeling unique. Mm-hmm. I just, like, I hope this is... Dir- the, the, uh, let me redo that. Yeah. I <laughs> hope that this is... Dir- man, Fuck. <laughs> Why is it so hard to say direction? <laughs> no, you're good. I you're hope good. that this is the direction that Nintendo goes in the future with 2D Mario because yeah. it's pretty close to 3D with mm-hmm. like just the imagination and like yeah, oh yeah. There's no timer anymore. You're not timed on levels. Yeah, I noticed that when I was playing last night. I was like, wow. This is, I mean, there are the levels that they are they would races. rather you explore than just like run yeah. through it, which I enjoy. And that's I mean, I'm a 3D Mario yeah. gamer, so like I love that. And there's. I beat it, and there's still stuff I haven't found yeah. and unlocked, and like I'm just amazed by how much work was put into it, and it yeah. came out so fast. To me, like it's just right there, like it now's yeah. and it was out. This is my favorite, like relaxing game of the year. Like I-, I can just hop in this game and play a few levels, and it's just joyful. Like it, yeah, uh, it's not frustrating at all, right? Like there are moments that can be challenging, and you can do things in a way that make you feel good. Like the parkouring in this game is there. Mm-hmm. But it's not required of you that you're going to get frustrated with a level. And you take nostalgia out of it. This is my favorite 2D Mario. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like Super Mario, like you go back to the SNES days, and there are some fantastic ones there. But this has the advantage of being in 2023 and, yeah, and doing a whole bunch of new things. So, like, yeah. And and how much new that is in this game with enemies and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. I'm impressed at, like, how much is like it's not your just your typical yeah. enemy types and your 
Bowser's kids are the boss fights. Their boss mm-hmm. fights are lacking in this game, and that's why it was a little lower for me. Is because it's Bowser Junior four yeah. times, and then Bowser. And I was like, that's not. With every world having like its own unique feel to it, they should have done bosses that fit that world, and that yeah. would have moved it up a notch for me. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on to number four and three, another tie at twenty points. Oh, fudge! Point. It just went from ten points to twenty points. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's these top nuts. Four, these top four are fantastic, and I, in my opinion, could win game of the year in a lot of other years. Yeah. Uh, so if they're not in the order you want them to be in, like we love all of them. Uh, number four, well, we'll just say both of them. Baldur's Gate 3 and Resident Evil 4 Remake. Oh. And that is very difficult. I would say Baldur's Gate 3 over the remake just because they're super innovative in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. They are innovative in Resident Evil 4 with the way they've redone all the but game. It's a remake. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's also a remake. I don't want to, like, I don't want to nag on that because they did change a lot. Yeah. But I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 has more ways to play. Than I'm going to... I was going to put you on tiebreaker. Well, I, I, I'm fine with that because I, I'll say I like Resident Evil 4 better just because it's more my type of game. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 because of that. Because it's it's so fresh. It's so innovative. It's one of the most innovative games in a long time. And Resident Evil 4 is a remake of one of the best games ever, and that gives it a lot of points, but it's a remake at the end of the day. Number four, Resident Evil 4 Remake. Uh, love this. This is one of my favorite yeah. games of all time, and the remake doesn't... It, it cuts a few things, but it was nothing that I'm mad about. Yeah. It, yeah. it was things that made sense to cut. It like, added some things, too. Yeah. yeah. And I just, like... I never thought that we would get the whole Resident Evil 4 story in one yeah. game. I thought this was going to be a part one, part two situation. Mm-hmm. I really thought that the whole time. Props to them, man. Yeah, like, they, they could have done that. They yeah. could have. And I would have paid for it. I definitely would have paid for it. And, and I, this game was $60, too. Capcom, applause. I give you applause. And I never, like, I guess in the original, I never thought about the whole map connecting the way it does. Yeah. But it like that just like backtracking and stuff. I was like, oh, it, yeah. it's very like Dark Soulsy with the, yeah. the shortcuts and stuff like that. I don't know. I just I would love this game. There's not much to more I can say about it. I hadn't yeah. said over the two years we've been doing yeah. podcasts. <laughs> or over the eighteen since it came yeah. out originally. I right. will say, as someone who has no nostalgic tether to the first one, this game rips. Yeah. This yeah. game rips, dude. Uh I have like no no I have no like loyalty to this yeah. game at all. And it still made my list and a game that I didn't really put a bunch bunch of hours in. Yeah. But the hours that I put in I clearly saw that how good it was. And this is their last safe bet remake. Oh, the, yeah. For Resident Evil, at least. Yeah, yeah. they're going to have to branch out when it goes forward. Because, uh, yeah, they're going to do something like 2, which is completely redo a game or, I mean, do redo 5 and yeah. make it more like 4. But, I, don't, I don't know what direction they'll go. Yeah, know. who knows? Yeah. This is, yeah. I mean, that's well, a good point. coming out that's next. a good point to make. But, yeah, yeah. Um, growing up, I loved the original but we were really young, like yeah. 10, 9 or 10 when this came out. I had on GameCube. And I was not the bravest of souls. Like, <laughs> my brother would play it, and I would hop in and try. And I enjoyed what I was playing, but I was terrified. You know, it was like I was never going to beat that game at that point in my life. So when this was announced, I was so excited to finally have that kind of control to, to get through it. Yeah. And I had such high expectations for it. It was like there's something to be said about knowing something's going to be good. And building that into your brain, and then it comes out and it surpasses that. Mm-hmm. Like it, can, I was excited, but man, when I started playing, I was like, "Holy crap! It's so much better than I even you know." <laughs> I wanted to do or, like envisioned. I wanted to explore and I wanted to do things in that game, which I didn't do the first time. Like yeah. when I was young and played it. Yeah, but now I was like, I want to go find some treasure. And like yeah. it was just a good time. Like it came out at such a good time, and uh, mm-hmm. I I spent twenty plus hours yeah. very fast just enjoying every bit of it yeah uh but we'll go on to number three number three Baldur's gate three. Oh wow and uh i want to say because i've played the least of this uh i do like what i've played of it and i've heard nothing but good things and i know mm-hmm. it would be something i would play hundreds of hours of uh, or will be once i you know get into it mm-hmm. but you'll uh, be able to come to xbox yeah. december yeah oh yeah I- i'm definitely going to uh it's just been a busy year and i Thought Is about that 100 hours. I think so. I think it's going to be a cross. Okay. Cross one. 
But uh, I thought about that 100 hours, and that's why I kind of put it on the back burner. Uh, this could have been number two had I done that, but uh, I think three is a good spot. I think so, too. I, uh, mean, I, did too, I did too, because I love – you want to go ahead or you mean to? No, you got it, Bubba. I love Baldur's Gate 3. Just the fact that you can do almost anything yep. in the game, and just yeah. like the little conversations are just – and I'm enamored with what they're saying, mm-hmm. what they're talking about, making the decisions. The only thing that kept this from being my number one or lower or higher, you know, yeah. the top three was the combat. And it yeah. drags Same. on sometimes for so long where I'm just like, I want to know the next story beat or I want to yeah. go have this conversation. Yeah. But this 30 to 45 minute fight that I may lose. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is you may lose it. You may spend 30 minutes to lose, to lose. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I enjoy the combat for what it is because yeah. it is D and D combat. It's just not what I want to do in that game. Uh-huh. I wish yeah. there was less of it. Like I just, I wish there was ways to not jump into a combat <laughs> situation every time. Like I wish yeah, there was a way yeah. to talk. Like there's more ways to talk out of it and stuff like mm. that. And I'm sure there, there are, and there probably are. Yeah. And I'm just not figuring it out. But that is my only drawback of the game, and that's a lot. I mean, it's yeah. just that one thing. Yeah, yeah it, it is a lot of time because uh, I was going to say as a huge D&D fan, like combat is fun, but it's not like the best part of it. Like, yeah, the, that's not what you're there for. No, nah, the best part of D&D is the characters you create yeah, and the, the stories, interactions. The and, yeah. yeah, and that's what I love about Baldur's Gate 3. It does it better than any game on our list. Mm-hmm. Any game that's come out in the last few years of storytelling, like yes. there's stories in this game that I will never see glimpses of. Yeah. I, that, I that, know that that's me. crazy yeah. to think that too. And it's just the combat that holds it back for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's just me. Yeah. It's also like there's so many so much side stuff to do. And it feels like when you're doing this, you're it feels like you're sitting down with your party. Mm-hmm. And but even when you're feels playing by yourself. Side at all no, it doesn't. Like the whole uh, which is bog thing yeah. area that is i totally could have missed that if i wasn't just if i would if i didn't take a step back was like i'm just gonna grind for a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. and it that i think the reason it's lower on my list it was number two on my list but the reason it, it was number two was because of the combat yeah um but yeah i mean just everything from the character customization to the way you 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 roll like i thought when I first watched this, I was like, I'm going to hate that mechanic. Yeah. I love and it. And I love it. <laughs> I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it. Because if you fuck up and you don't get to do what you wanted to do, you ha- it's on it's on you to think how you're going to get yeah. out Just, of that. Disco Solid. Elysium as kind of has that dice roll kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Number two, Marvel Spider-Man 2. It's funny that we number four was Resident Evil four, number three was Baldur's Gate three, and number two is Spider-Man number six 2. was Armored Core six. Yeah, holy crap! Yeah, we did not do that on purpose. <laughs> number two with twenty four points, Spider Man two. It's a good. It's a good spot. It is a good spot. Yeah. It's very consistent throughout our list. This is number four for me. This is number two for two. you. And number, number three. three for and you. there was, and I co co is the only person that ever heard me say it. There was a point where this was my number one. Really? <laughs> and I was like, crap. "Are you crazy?" I, was like, yeah. I don't know. It's like it's right when I got to a certain part, and I was like, yeah. "I'm so impressed by this game." Yeah, yeah. I mean, <sighs> well, that, that oh, that's interesting because we're about to get to number one, and uh, I will. Man, say- that's interesting because you're looking at the story in comparison and some of the gameplay. Ah, I'm ready to get to number one, but we'll go ahead and continue talking on Spider-Man. I will say yeah. this game, Spider-Man 2, is the easiest game on my top ten to play, to jump yeah. in and play. Yeah, and true. it's, even with the web swinging mechanic, where in the first one, I, for some reason, I am smooth baby brain, and I can't. Yeah. I, when I went back to it, I was like, I don't know how to swing. And I, there are but a lot this of inputs one, in this game. I, there, there are, but yeah. it flows so well, and it's so easy for me to play. And then also the story's top notch. The characters are top notch, uh, except MJ's overpowered fucking thing yeah. uh, missions. And then I don't, I don't want to spoil it. I was yeah. going to spoil it, but then I was like, no. But uh, MJ being LP, and it's just like this game is what when you were a kid and you're watching Tobey yeah. Maguire Spider Man. What you're picturing? Yeah. This is what you want, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you want Tobey Maguire Spider Man, but you want more villains, and that's what this yeah. is. And because I. Don't watch, I don't read the comics and I don't really watch the cartoons. And the first one was my first introduction to Miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mine too. This is like, oh, it's awesome. It's an awesome Peter story. It's a 
wonderful milestone. Yeah, it's like, great. It's, it's it crazy it, how they took it, both of them, and they both have great stories. Yeah. They, yeah, so it's not like GTA Five where all three of those stories are kind of mediocre. You yeah, don't really get yeah. into much development. They sum up to a good There's, thing. Yeah, they yeah. all sum up to a good thing. These are two great things, and they sum up together to be even better. Yeah, awesome. It's just like... It, it's crazy how they focused on two different characters and then threw MJ in there sometimes. And they had, you know, Harry's friends, Peter's or Harry's friends, Peter's friends, Miles friends, yeah. like that whole thing, missions that they can do missions that they, how they swing. And it just all melded together to be fucking great. Yeah. And I was worried that they would play too similar. And it's no, that went away in the first, like the Sandman fight, yeah. which is, I don't know why I never thought about Sandman being in the Spider-Man game, but that, Opening, oh, yeah. that opening it's mission ripped. is Fantastic. Yeah, so ripped. iconic and like it showed off the ps5 yeah. and i love it insomniac is just so they're like the persistence of that opening yeah Be, like the sand being around everywhere like, they're so oh, it's good throughout at, the whole game the attention yeah. to detail is almost rock star level mm -hmm. for, for them and it's like if Sonic is the like i would say the one studio that is pushing like the ps5 this is what a ps5 yeah. can do yeah with ratchet and clank and now spiraling too yeah. like sony should just Give them all the big fucking yeah, contracts, I mean, which they are. I mean, yeah. like they they're keep it, they're keep getting, it up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that'll take us to number one. Number one, Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. This is all of our number With ones. A perfect thirty. Points. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I was the only slight surprise I had was that you put it at number one. Just like I knew you liked it a lot. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if you might have Baldur's Gate there or Spider Man there right above it. Uh, but I'm glad it got a perfect. I will point. say this. It was this year was easier to place number one on my list and to put Zelda yeah. on top of it because there has been no Nintendo game ever in the history of Nintendo yeah. games that I have played to grab, you like to grab me like this yeah. game. Yeah, there's not one. There's not one that grabbed me like this, dude. And I don't care about these types of games where yeah. they don't You're explain not like anything. Zelda, it being a Zelda game, didn't really matter that much. No, to you. And it, it didn't. And then the game really mattered to you <laughs> then the game mattered yeah. dude and it made everything it else that, i mean I'm, that's how i feel yeah like because i did not uh, i mean on record didn't care about breath of the law that much i liked it okay but like it didn't do that much for me this game that's why i was when you were talking about spider-man 2 like that's why this is above that for me because spider-man 2 is really good but like i can't discern it as much from the first one other than the story yeah, yeah. And the story is way better and the gameplay is way better than uh Tears of the Kingdom, but there's just something so special about the way they made the, the travel, the world, yeah. the puzzles, like oh. the mechanics. Like it is, you can obviously see that it's Breath of the Wild two, of yeah. course. But uh, this game just stands on its own so well for me. For me too. Yeah. Whereas like Spider Man two, I think of those two as a package in, in a way, uh, like which isn't a bad thing. They're both great. Like, no, they are both great. But they are more like the part one, part two. Whereas this is just. It's like perfecting something that you already thought yeah. was perfect. That so many people thought was perfect. And and to me, it's not even the big story stuff of no. Tears no. of the Kingdom. Yeah. It's not any of those story missions. It's going into a town, mm -hmm. spending hours, just like there's little <laughs> little side quest stuff. Yeah. And it's just like all very interesting to do. And it's, yeah. I never was like, oh, here's another one of those kind of missions. Like it was never yeah. that. And when they showed this game first, the it was the building mechanic and like the yeah. glue and all that. And I was like, that's gonna suck. I'm not gonna like yeah. it. I'm not. I never have yeah. liked building. Never yeah. been a builder. Yeah. It's one of my favorite. Mechanics every time, of all time. <laughs> anytime that I walk past the guy with a sign, I stop and immediately. Yeah. I immediately have help to help him. him. Yeah, yeah. I'll say yeah. that, dude. This game, it makes me do the. It makes me do the things I hate in games and love doing it. Yeah. Like yeah. I love doing the. the building. Yeah, I love doing the building. I like. Mostly when I play open world games, I mainline. I mainline and then I go back and do side quest. Dude, it was thirty hours before I yeah. got to the second whatever. The second yeah, person. Yeah. That's my only uh like flaw with the game is that I get so distracted with other things that I find myself not <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to be doing for like thirty hours and I'm like, wait, where was where was I in the main thing? Like <laughs> yeah. the point. But that's okay. Like that I've spent sixty, seventy hours on it and loved every minute of it. Uh I think the comparison to Spider-Man, that would be the point. You said uh, Spider-Man was the easiest game to jump into. Yeah. Zelda, not so much. No, it's not. But You it, kind of forget what you were supposed to be doing, and that's okay sometimes because like, that game gives you plenty to you know just yeah. run over here and do this thing. But like, I'm a very like 
uh, driven person of like checklist. Let's do it. You know, it's, it's not also, as good at that as Spider Man is. It's also like some of the greatest things in life aren't easy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and this yeah. you, it rewards you. And it I'm, has survival game elements in that way. And like I've in, beaten. I've rolled credits, and I've done uh, over a hundred trons. Yeah. And the depths, Matt, if you look at it, it's just, there's so much left for me to do. Yeah. Oh my and it's gosh. just, I look at it and I'm like, I haven't played it in a while just because it's been nonstop yeah. game yeah. release, but I will get back to it. And it's just like, there's so much I still have to do. Yeah. And like, there's stuff I haven't seen in that game and outfits and weapons and stuff I haven't seen yet. And that, yeah. that's just mm-hmm. impressive. This is a game where I can wake up on a Sunday morning, the sun's shining through my, my window. And it's too cold to go outside. Switch. And I just pull out the switch and sit yeah. on my chair and play this game. And I'm just like, yeah. I haven't played this game in four months, and it's still amazingly fun to jump into this game. If just, I just had one word to describe the game, it would be majestic. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that's the, great. The things you come across, like skydiving, and the things you see, are like oh. it just looks majestic as you're as you're doing it. Like the freaking colossus, the music up in the sky. Uh, and the I was music just about to say playing, the like the ambience and the, the, light the, the setting is the just clouds. like yes, yeah. the music helps everything it heightens everything in games and when you're a kid and you're playing you don't realize it until you're like driving in the car and you mm-hmm. hear a game soundtrack you're like, what the fuck i remember that yeah. but once you realize that and then you realize the tutorial mission you jump off and there's music playing and you're like oh this is awesome yeah. <laughs> so there's one, like you know those memories that you collect yeah and there's one where you uh gandorf Here's the name Link, and it plays the original yeah. Legend of Zelda theme, and I was oh, like, "Oh, that's that's really that's cool. So yeah. cool." The way they use, like, they didn't use about- a lot of it, and they, but they, what they did use of old music, like they redid it in such a way that yeah. it feels new. And I, I don't know, I'm just very, it's just in it, love with this game. Like it's gonna be in my top 100, like yeah. in the top, yeah, three. Yeah, dude, this it's game, already over Breath of the Wild for me. Yeah. It's just like this game. You just talked about they played the old Legends of or the old Link Legend of Zelda theme. theme. Never heard it, but I love the fact that they did that, and it makes me so happy. And I don't even care about Legends yeah. of Zelda, like yeah. the Legend of Zelda. Not but Legends. I, only negative that comes to mind for this game is that they reuse the cutscenes every time you complete a shrine or a temple. Oh like, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that oh, comes yeah. to mind where I'm like, that was lazy. Everything else, I'm like. Wow, they went the extra mile. But like the fact that every temple you come you to, have to yes. they do they say the same thing. I started skipping it. I, I skipped thing. it. I was like, come on, like you only had five cutscenes to do. Make them different. Like, yeah, <laughs> make them a little bit different. Dead. Yeah. Um, but uh, that that's kind of a, a a continual issue with Nintendo is that they don't go that extra mile on the cinematics. Like that's the one thing you can really point out. That, Which like, really, I mean, Odyssey. If they're gonna dump a hundred percent into their game plan, yeah, I'm fine with. That. Yeah, I'm fine with with skipping. Yeah, things. but this game is as big as it gets in terms of they knew it was gonna make a ton of money. In so a just a little time little. period too of where I wasn't enjoying sequels as much. Yeah. Oh yeah. It this came out and I was like, okay, now this is a sequel, and then Spider Man yeah. Two, of course, too. But I was mainly talking about Star Wars and God of War. God yeah. of War. There's something else that. Horizon, like oh, I, don't, yeah. I like the sequel better than the original, but I can understand people not, you know, because yeah. it's too much of the same. Yeah, where this was like it redid all the powers, mm-hmm. started you back out for three hearts, like it did. Yeah. It did everything right to me, and I was worried going into it that it was going to be too much Breath of the Wild, and then I completely that went away yeah. in the first yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because I, like you said, sequels have not been hitting for me lately. Like all the way back to like Borderlands Three, kind of started this tilt. Where I'm like, it just a little bit of yeah. disappointment. It's still good games, all of them. That uh, oh yeah, they're good. They're just not Star Wars. great. Yeah, but it's like mm-hmm. those games, like Ragnarok and, and other ones, like they're good, but they're just delivering the same thing. And I'm not like, there's nothing for me to point out and be like, oh yeah, this is so much better about this. The biggest, this is the first one to really just stand stand out from the last one. The craziest thing I did last year was put Ragnarok over Elden Ring. Yeah. But it still got first. In okay. retrospect, because I think it was just a, it just came out, so I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. recency bias. Yeah. But, because I'm, the more I think about Ragnarok, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'm yeah. still at the, I mean, it's a good game. It's a top 100 game. Yeah. It's not better than 2018. Not even a little bit. Well, since we're at the end here, and Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom is our game of the year. Game of the year, baby. I want to know, I think y'all know my answer. Is it better than last year's game of the year? Wait, what the was Absurdly it? Nerd Game of the Year in 2022. Oh, Elden Ring? Was to Elden me, Ring. it is. 
Yeah, perfect. Ah, uh, ooh, fuck. It's just more my type of game. Yeah, but they're so similar in a lot of ways. God, really they think really. About it. <sighs> they have a lot of the same elements. I lean Elden Ring because that gameplay is what I look for in a game. Like that's what I want to play whenever I pick up a controller. Is that gameplay? But if I'm not playing a shooter, but my controller is never in danger when I'm playing Tears of the it's Kingdom. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's really whether you want intensity or freeness. Like, but I the will say, of Zelda is beautiful. One yeah. of the things I'm thinking of now when I'm thinking of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is that when I play and I I'm just like fucking around, killing little enemies here and there. I know that at some point I'm going to get to an enemy where I'm going to get eviscerated and I can't just get good. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to have to get more is weird hearts. In, in that game a little bit. Sometimes you come across something you're like, oh, all of a sudden I'm having such a hard time mm-hmm. when I've been. It's all, all these. the way they do enemies is really cool. It's a uh, story by the how many. So the more you do in the main line, yeah. the stronger. That's so different types of bulk, bulk, uh, bulk bulk goblins, goblins and yeah. stuff like that, like the different color variations. Like, if there's white ones now where oh, I'm at. Oh, okay. So you beat more. They do. Well, that I needed to know that because that means it's getting harder every time I do that. Yeah. If I'm not getting better. If, yeah, if you're not really, yeah. like, just exploring, yeah. doing the shrines and all that and leveling up and getting the hearts and stuff, yeah. you get stuck with. You know what's crazy is I'll see people playing Legend of Zelda and they'll just, like, 1v1 those, whatever those finals. dragons. Yeah. Or the three-headed, the three-headed like, dragon. Those are hard. And there's, like, they kill them in, like, five seconds. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> built it would take me 30 minutes to do that. <coughs> i'm still not good at fighting anything like i just i'm sucking no. but with game. this out and knowing this was going to be coming out since pretty much the same year breath of the wild i mean it was mm-hmm. like a year later they said this was in development i'm now so excited for what's next for yeah Zelda. i hope it's different I what. oh yeah i think it'll be different i wonder change your pace new new zelda new story new yeah i could it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like style. there is a timeline it's kind of made up yeah. bullshit but it's more final fantasy with yeah there's a link and yeah there's a zelda and yeah there's a ganon or ganondorf or something else but there's Big always ganon. like those elements are always the yeah. same but it's the the setting is different that's a good point there's yeah. always a high roll yeah you know but uh yeah that'll do it for us our top 10 games of 2023 let us know in the comments what you thought i know there's some disagreements in there and we want to hear them we yeah. want to talk about them what what completely missed the list that you think should be there Starfield was one of our honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh, it barely missed my top 10. I, I enjoyed it, made... it but it, it slid off. Honestly, though, I want to talk about that. Whenever I started that, I, the way I do my list is first impressions. If I played about three hours, I go ahead and place it on my list, and then as I go, I move it. Yeah, I, I do feel. the same. I, really? I move it. Yeah, because I like to have that first impression because then I know how much I really liked it, and so like if it starts to sag, yeah. then, oh, it's fun for me. Uh, I just make a list of all the games I played throughout the year, and yeah. then when I'm narrowing down my top ten, I delete games off my uh, notes that I know aren't going to make my top ten. But it it was all the way up at number two whenever I first started playing that, like when I was about five hours in, and then it just trickled on off as as I played more games and as I played more of it. The highest it got on mine was in six or seven. Really? Uh, also, I did want to point out, I played 31 games this year that I would qualify as playing enough of to say whether I like them. Uh, and I went ahead and put like ratings on them, and uh, mm-hmm. all but four or five of them were above sixty. So they're all mostly, you know, I liked them at least. Oh my god, Diablo Four didn't make our top ten. It was the first one out. It was eleven. Oh. It, it had seven points, and I, I, I was almost pulling for it because we had a lot of fun. We did have that. a lot of fun, but time. I like the list we ended. But up I understand. Yeah, I like I like our Another list. Another honorable mention, and it's a time thing. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Uh, as far as oh, a remake, yeah. it wouldn't make the the top half, yeah. and it would be very low. It's a good game, yeah. and it's a you know at, for its time, it's an amazing game. But nowadays, it's like oh well, this is yeah. There, I've played better games. There's mm-hmm. two blind spots for me during this year, and it's Wonder and Alan Wake Two. I started yeah. Alan Wake Two today. Yeah, so. mine would be Alan Wake Two, and then. Finishing Baldur's Gate would have done a lot in terms of changing the list. But, you know, we got the list we've got, and it's, it's a good yeah, list. Yeah, it's a good list. Uh, but, yeah, thank you for watching, and stay until the end, and we'll see you next time. Stay nerdy.